In this video, we will discuss the structure of synapse and the method of impulse transmission across the synapse from one neuron to another. First, what is a synapse? It's a small gap between synaptic terminal of a presynaptic neuron and the dendrite or the cell body of the postsynaptic neuron or effector cell. In the simplest term, synapse refers to the area where one neuron interacts with another neuron or an effector cell. Synapse is very important which will allow different neurons to communicate with each other. In another word, synapse will allow the electrical impulse from one neuron can be transferred to the next neuron. Let us look at the structure of a synapse. Each synapse contains three main components. First is the synaptic knob or synaptic terminal. The synaptic knob is a knob shape at the end of an axon and consists of synaptic vesicle and the presynaptic membrane. Synaptic vesicles contain neurotransmitter which is a type of chemical signal while the presynaptic membrane have voltage-gated calcium ion channel. The second component is the synaptic cleft. This is the narrow gap between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane where the neurotransmitter will be released into and diffused across the synaptic cleft. The third component is the postsynaptic membrane located on the postsynaptic neuron. This membrane contains ligand gated ion channel or receptor. As we can see based on the structure of synapse, one neuron is not directly connected to the next neuron. There is a gap between them that we call synaptic cleft. This means that electrical impulse traveling along the axon cannot directly transfer to the next neuron due to the absence of axon membrane in the synaptic cleft. As we have seen previously in the action potential, the presence of axon membrane is crucial as it will create the difference in the electrical charges that we call membrane potential. This is why the electrical impulse in a form of action potential cannot travel across the synaptic cleft. So, for impulse in one neuron to travel to the next neuron, it will have to change from electrical signal into chemical signal that we call neurotransmitter. So, how does this change takes place? First, arrival of the action potential at the synaptic knob causes depolarization of the presynaptic membrane which then triggers the opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channel. Calcium ion can diffuse into the synaptic knob down the concentration gradient. Influx of the calcium ion triggers exocytosis of the synaptic vesicle where the synaptic vesicle will move towards and fuses with the presynaptic membrane thus releasing neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Next, the neurotransmitter will diffuse across the synaptic cleft towards the postsynaptic membrane, where it will bind with the ligand-gated ion channel or receptor. The binding will trigger opening of the ligand-gated ion channel and then allow sodium ion to enter the axon while potassium ion to diffuse out of the axon. Influx of the sodium ion will cause depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane. The depolarization then triggers generation of action potential at the postsynaptic neuron. At this point, you can see that electrical impulse from the presynaptic neuron has been transferred to the postsynaptic neuron. This was made possible by the neurotransmitter coming from the presynaptic neuron. Overall, we can see that for impulse to travel from one neuron to the next neuron across the synapse, it will change form 
from electrical into chemical and then back into electrical. Neurotransmitter will be released from the receptor or the ligand gated ion channel and either become transported back into the synaptic knob or can also be hydrolyzed by enzyme. That is how impulse are transported from one neuron to the next neuron across the synapse.